During our first treatment of arrays, we talked about how we would add or remove an element at the end of an array uh, the, if the array is not full. And again, that leads us to the idea of physical array size versus logical array size. You can see in the example here, uh, our logical array size, that is the number of cells in the array that are actually full with a meaningful element, is, that is less in this case than the physical size of the array. This is a concept that we have to deal with because in Java, arrays are statically sized. So when you instantiate an array object, you have to decide how big the array is going to be. We'll learn some ways around that in the future using different data structures, but for now, arrays are statically sized. Today, we're going to talk about how we would uh, insert or remove an element of an array if we want to do it not just at the end, but also in the middle of the array, in the middle of the elements that are already in the array. Now, as we talk about this, we're going to make a couple of assumptions. First, we're going to assume that arrays are a fixed size. They're, they're a, a constant size. So if our array is full, that means we're not actually going to perform an insertion. We're going to work with arrays of objects, although we could modify the code to, uh, to, to handle arrays of integers or employees or whatever other type we want to use in the array. Third assumption is that for successful insertions, the target index is going to be between 0 and the logical size, inclusive. We'll insert the new element right before the element that's currently at the target index or after the last element if, uh, if that target index is equal to the logical size. Again, that just means that if, uh, if we're sticking an element in the middle of an array, uh, we're going to shift everything else to the right, but we'll see that in a second. Fourth assumption, if we're trying to remove an element, we're going to assume that the target index is going to be between 0 and the logical size, not inclusive of the logical size. If any of these assumptions aren't met, we're going to return false from the, uh, from the methods that we're writing. Otherwise, we're going to do it and return true, assuming things went properly. We'll also assume that we have these declarations. This is the default capacity of the array, which will be 5. Uh, the, the, the initial logical size, which is going to be 0, because we won't have anything in the array so far. And the array itself, which is uh, declared and instantiated to be of the size default capacity, in this case, 5. So for each of these two operations that we're talking about, insertion and removal, we're going to talk about a uh, basically a brief description of the strategy you'd use if you were going to implement it, and we'll look at some, some Java code segments that are annotated with comments. Then, once you're done with the lecture, you're going to go ahead and write those methods yourself, and you can even refer to the, uh, to the code segments if you'd like. Now, we'll start with inserting an item into an array. This is different from replacing an item that's already in an array, and it's a little bit harder than replacing. When you're doing replacement, the item already exists at the index, and all you need to do is a simple assignment statement. That's it's pretty straightforward. The key thing is that the logical size of the array doesn't change. You're just taking out one element, and you're really just overwriting it with a new one. But if we're inserting an element into an array, there's a couple of things we have to do. We have to check if there's enough space in the array before we attempt the insertion. And if there's no space, we got to return false. we got to check if the target index where we're trying to insert the element is valid. And we got to return false if it's not greater than or equal to 0, or less than or equal to the logical size. We can't insert an element outside the bounds of the array. Note that because we include the equals to with the logical size, we're saying that we're allowed to insert an element as the last item in the list, in which case the logical size would increase. Third thing is everything from the target index all the way to the logical end of the array is going to get shifted down by one position to make room for the item that we're inserting. Fourth thing is we're going to assign the new item to the cell at the target index, which now we've sort of cleared some space for by shifting everything else down. The last two things are we're going to increment the logical size by one, because now our array is bigger. We've inserted a new element, and we'll return true so we can indicate that this operation worked. You can see what this looks like here. If we start with this array of logical size 4, physical size 5, well, we go from the target index, if we're trying to, uh, to insert something at position 1, and rather than starting at the target index, we're going to start at the logical end of the array and shift things down. So the first thing we do is shift D4, that's the element at index 3, shift it to the next empty spot. And we do that going backward until we have duplicated the element at the target index. You can see if we did this in the opposite direction, we would actually overwrite our data. We might lose that fourth element. If we rewrote D2 into D3 and D3 into D4, well, then we'd lose D4. Doing it this way leaves us space to do the insertion. 
Here's the Java code for uh, for the insertion operation. You can see these these chunks make sense. First, we're checking to make sure that the array is not full. If it is, we return false. We're going to look to make sure that the target index is valid, and if it's not valid, that is if it's less than zero or it's greater than the logical size, uh, we're going to return false as well. Then we do our shift. We start at the logical end, at the, all the way at the end of the array, and we do our shift starting from there, working backwards to the target index. And finally, once we've cleared space for the new item, we can just do our simple assignment and store it right there in the array. We want to increment our logical size and return true. Easy peasy. Now, if we're going to remove an item from an array, we're essentially doing the inverse operation. We check to make sure that the target index we're looking at is valid, and if it's not greater than zero and it's not, or it's not less than the logical size, then we return false because that index is garbage. Then we'll do some shifting. This time, we won't start at the logical end. We'll start at the target index, and we want to shift the items from the target index uh, to the logical end of the array up by one position. We decrement the logical size because we were losing an element, and we'd return true to show that the whole thing worked. You can see the way that's going to work here. If we're trying to remove the element at 1, well, we'll start right after that target index, and we're just going to immediately overwrite the element at 1 with the element at 2. D overwrite D3 with D2. Uh, we'll do the same with D4, with D5. We'll make sure that the element 4, in other words, where the original D5 was, we'll make sure that's now empty, and then we've lost that element at 1. We've lost D2. That's what we were trying to overwrite. Again, the order that you do the shifting in is critical. It makes a big difference. The code for removal looks pretty similar as well. We're checking to make sure that the target index is valid. We're doing our shifting, and ultimately we're adjusting our logical size and returning a Boolean value to indicate that the whole thing worked. Now, there's other ways to handle errors. You could, instead of returning a Boolean value, you could return a string that told what kind of error happened, or you could throw an actual exception object. And if you did that, then you'd want to return void rather than Boolean. But that's up to your judgment. Now, these things that we're talking about, inserting or removing elements from arrays, we do it so frequently that it's a good idea to, uh, to, to provide methods for them. And ideally, you want to implement them as static methods in a class and use them sort of as utility functions in the same way you might use one of, uh, one of Java's math class methods. So you can see in this code example, we're doing some insertion and removal. I actually leave those two methods blank here for you so that if you'd like, you can go back through and fill them in yourselves. Uh, you'll likely, you, you'll be able to do them on your own. If you need to, you can refer to the code snippets earlier in this lecture. But you can see on the left in this main method how exactly this code is going to be used. Uh, we're just declaring a new array of strings. It's going to have length 3, starts with a logical size of 0, and then we go through and insert items one by one, specifying what position we're going to use. And in this case, we're using our insert item utility method. If you want, then, after having inserted a bunch of items to the array, you could go ahead and remove the items too. It's easy enough. A key thing to notice here is that Though we have these utility methods that are going to do the insertions and removals for us, it's still up to us to track the logical size of the array. So that means if there are elements in the array that are null or empty or are not meaningful data, then you want to have a variable that keeps track of how much of the array is occupied by meaningful data, by, by useful stuff. And that's going to stop you from getting uh, a bunch of null pointer exceptions and things like that. Now, if you end up opening up this code from the distribution files for the lecture, uh, you can implement your own insert and remove methods. And uh, for mine, I included some illuminating print statements. When I run mine, this is what I get. I end up with the array Jack sees Jill. And that makes sense because uh, the fourth insertion that I'm trying to do, where I try to insert the word before at element zero, well, my array is only three elements long. So if I've already inserted Jack, Jill, and sees, the insertion of before should return false and just not work because I can't insert a fourth element into an array that's already full, at least the way I've defined my insertion method. Takeaways for today. Describe both at a high level and um, ideally in Java syntax how you would insert or remove an arbitrary array element from an array. You can go ahead and complete the two methods in the, uh, in the slide that we just saw and in the code that you download for this lecture. And take a look at these two methods. Describe what they do. Think about what their outcome is going to be. That's it for insertions and removals from arrays.